Have you ever wondered what it would be like to create 10 logos in 10 minutes? Seriously? Really? That's crazy, right? I mean, that's a lot of logos in 10 minutes. But that's exactly what I'm gonna set out to do today as I try to accomplish this extraordinary feat of creating 10 movie logos in 10 minutes inside of Adobe Illustrator. So let's fire up Illustrator and see if I can get it done. All right, so before I get started, I'm gonna go over to chat GPT here, or GPT-4, and I'm gonna use this to help me come up with a few movie title ideas. So give me a list of 20 movie titles for a movie um, about a girl who is haunted by crows or something. All right, let's try that out. Give me a list of 20 movie titles. Let's see what it comes back with. The Crow's Curse, Flight of the Raven, Feathered Fright, <laughs> Murder of Crows, that's pretty, pretty epic. Crow's Perch, Ravenous Fear, Wing Terror, that one's pretty cool too. Uh, Raven's Retreat. Yeah, not, not a bad list at all. So I'm going to just go with my gut here. I'm just going to take A Murder of Crows, which I think that's like what you call a group of, of crows when they're together. So um, yeah, let's go with that one. All right, so as you can see here, I have some photos. So now I've done some research, pulled some photos of crows, some textures that I can work with here before I jump in, um, just so I can give myself some like elements and assets to work with here. And all I'm gonna do is bring some of these into Illustrator and auto trace them, right? And I'm just gonna put them on my artboard just so I have some of those assets to work with here before I dive into it. So you'll see I've got these two artboards, one for textures, one with just some different different birds and the other 10 are going to be for our movie title logos so um, we're going to get started on that in just a sec i think we're just about ready to go all right so let's hit the stopwatch let's get at it all right here my strategy is going to be to type out the movie title a murder of crows all right and what i want to do is just scale that up make it nice and big i'm going to paste it on my second artboard then the third and the fourth artboard. And all I wanna do now is just start changing up the typefaces. So I wanna get like a handful of different fonts in here. Um, some of these are free fonts. Some of them are from heritage uh, type, like Brillon, Black River, with some really cool looking fonts. They're more like vintage, but they have a lot of character and personality to them. I'm just gonna paste all four of those on my next four artboards and just continue changing up the typefaces here. Um, some of these are fonts that I use pretty often. Some are just more um, for variety, right? Like a permanent marker. Maybe I'll try like this one, like a nice serif font, something a little bit wider. Maybe I'll go with uh, another slab. Yeah, I tried Bondi already. All right, come on. I'll go with this one again. So I think that's a free font from defont.com. I'm going to paste those last two on my last two artboards and just find two more typefaces here that I can work with um, before I start piecing these together. All right, maybe I'll go with uh, Vectra. That's like a nice kind of handwritten typeface. And then the last one, let's go with uh, Royal. Royal signage is pretty cool. That's another one from Heritage. Um, and again, I'll, I'll link to some of those in the description below uh, so you can check out their typefaces. Really nice fonts. All right, so let's get started here. I'm just going to start on my fourth artboard here just playing around with the size and positioning of the the type a little bit all i want to do is kind of like stack these and center them i'm going to keep this first one pretty simple just so i can get something together here all right let's scale that up a little bit more maybe just blow out the tracking a little bit and then center everything i think that would look pretty good yeah that looks pretty nice let's just center it in the align panel there Move the A back closer to everything else. All right, cool. Center that, scale it down a little bit, and then we'll keep it moving here. Let's go on to our next one. Here I'm gonna be working with Black River Bold. And while I like this font a lot, I like the uh, the lowercase letters more. I think the lowercase letters are a little bit easier to read, um, especially if you're doing something like this where you've got several words kind of locked up like this. All right, so I'm just playing around with the positioning and the size of some of the letters here, and I'll grab one of the crows that I've got. I'll see if I could place that on top of the type maybe. But it needs an outline. I need a stroke around that. So let's just go ahead and use the offset path. 
put a three pixel white stroke around it, bring the other copy to the front. I can lock that so that I can just grab the, the type behind it. And here all I want to do is just play around with the positioning of the, the type a little bit to make sure it's easy to read. All right, so I'm going to do just that. Move the A down, maybe stack the R's. That looks pretty nice. And then I'll sample the A so that it will copy the same size here. All right, and then let's group that together. Move it in the center here. All right, and then we'll go over to this next one. This is another one where, you know, it has some really nice alternate characters and things like that, but the lowercase letters tend to work a little bit better here, I think. All right, so let's try this out. Maybe I like the, the uppercase C, but I want the rest of the letters to be lowercase. We could try that. And maybe the F can kind of... Nah, I don't really like that. I was going to say have it intersect, but I'm just going to keep that simple. But for the A, I'll try one of the alternate characters and maybe do the same for the R. That looks pretty good. I'm going to scale that down a little bit, figure out where to place that. All right, and then I'll group this second, third bottom line here together, kind of stack it like that. Maybe center the A over the top of the word murder, group that together. Now let's just grab a different, uh, different crow here. Let's try this guy. I'm going to drop him in. Where to place him though? He feels a little bit disjointed. I might ref I might actually flip this the other way. So let's do transform, reflect, place this over the right side so it balances it out a little bit like that. Have it overlap the R and the O. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, and then we'll keep it moving here. We'll go to the next one, scale down A and of, grab a different crow, maybe try a texture this time. Hopefully this doesn't screw me up too bad. I feel like it's going to slow down my computer. Just make that white. And here I want to make sure that this is white on top of the text. It might make it a little hard to read, so let's lock that. Get our type set up here behind the texture. All right, and then I'll unlock the texture. Maybe I need to flip it or rotate it a little bit. Yeah, something like that's pretty cool. Just move that over. I'm going to change the fill color to red, and then what I want to do is select the texture and the type and convert it to outlines using Command Shift O. Go to my Pathfinder and hit Merge. Grab some of that red and then go to Select Same Fill and Stroke and just delete it. Okay, and then all I'm going to do here is grab another crow. Let's grab this one. I'm digging this kind of grungy typeface here, so let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's go lowercase. Hmm, maybe I'll make that white. It would look kind of cool if I put that inside the crow. So let's just do that real quick. Grab all the text, lock the crow, bring the type to the front and make it white. And then we'll just kind of arrange our letters inside here. Again, I'll have to change this to like upper lower. Scale that down a little bit. I'm kind of digging that one. That one looks pretty nice. That's the thing, when you're trying to do this many this quickly, I can't promise that they'll all look really good, but you might end up with a couple that, that you like. All right, let's just scale that up. I think that M or the S can kind of bleed outside of the, the shape a little bit. That's cool. And we'll just keep going here to the next one. I'm just doing the same thing, playing around with the size, positioning of the words first. All right, and then I'm going to maybe sample that other typeface just to mix it up here. So we'll go like something like this. Maybe I can grab the same crow again. And this time I'm thinking like maybe like a single line kind of lockup would be nice. So what I might do is get rid of that. Let's just move that over. Right, change it to white, scale it down a little bit. Mm, I don't know if I'm digging the A like that. I might play with that a bit more. Right, we can kind of make it look like it's one line here. And I'll just add the A to the the other typeface, All right? And something like that's kind of cool. All right, and then we'll keep going here to the, the marker font, try a different crow, maybe the one on the branch. I like that one, um, but it might be too like vertical. I don't know. Let's see, scale that down, play around with the positioning, make a copy. All right, do the same thing here, change that to of. Nice, scale it up, sample it so I get the same size. I don't really think that crow is working though, so I'm going to grab a different one, maybe the one flying with the wings out. And I can kind of place that in the middle, make a copy, 
I'm gonna flip this one again, reflect, put that one on the top. And then it kind of looks like a, a flock, right? It looks like a group of crows or a murder of crows. And then we're just gonna group that together. Keep it moving here. What else can we use? I'll try this one with the branches. I, I kind of dig that a little bit and see if I can get away with putting the type behind it. Again, I'll have to play with the size a little bit and positioning, but I think this can work. Let's go ahead and unlock that. All right, and then I'm just gonna grab those two words, make them bigger. Grab the A and the of and make that a little bit smaller, just reposition it. All right, and then something like that, but I might make the, I might make that a little bit heavier. I'm gonna grab the A and the of and just change the weight or the style of that to make it a little heavier um, since the type is smaller, all right? And then we're getting there, we're getting pretty close. So I'm gonna use this crow, go over here to royal signage, change this to lowercase, just like we were doing before. That probably would have saved me some time if I had just done lowercase for all these. All right, but what I wanna do is maybe make this upper lower, put the crow over here on the side, and then oh, I need to do something with this other one too. Okay, oh, I think I spelled that wrong. That's all right. Let's just get these uh, stacked here. Pretty close, pretty close, all right? Almost there, guys. So we're gonna reposition that a little bit to stack that, group it together, and just finish this last one really quickly. All right, I'm gonna just polish this one off, drop the letter A in here, make a copy of it, change it to of. Nope, lowercase. Maybe I'll put that over the top here. And there we go, I think I've got it. All right, it looks pretty good. All right, so there you have it. There's 10 movie title logos in 10 minutes. And like I said, some of them look better than others, but there's a nice variety of options here that you can see. Um, and if this was a real project, my workflow would probably look the same. It would just normally be a bit longer than 10 minutes, but I would have my synopsis or movie title. I would do some research to gather textures, photos, inspiration. And then once I had all of that together, I would bring it into Illustrator, you know, vectorize some of them. Um, using the image trace is fine. You can do it that way too. And then from there, I would start doing the type and font explorations before I start piecing everything together, like you saw me doing here very quickly uh, in the last 10 minutes. So I wanted to try this challenge out, see if I could do it. It was, you know, a challenge. I think I might be sweating a little bit, but I did it just in time. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, watching me do 10 movie logos in 10 minutes. If you did enjoy the tutorial and want to see more like this, let me know in the comments. Go ahead and smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here for Teach Me to Design. We'll see you next time. Peace out.